Turn, take. Gorgeous. This came out of the deeper water. You know, that dark green abyss. I call it an abyss because you can't see anything down there. It's right off the break. Isn't this awesome? Look at it. Is he gonna, you can actually see when we say that it's uh, flesh bait, you can see all the little white pieces just from the sh fish shaking his head that's coming off it. How biodegradable it is. What a nice smallmouth. I'd love to see him fight like that in this clear water. Look at it. Gorgeous. Trying to dive down to that 15, 20 foot mark. Come on. Man, talk about energy. <laughs> look at On this little rod too, look at This rod is four feet, nine inches. You can see the specs right here. And it's rated from one eighth to half ounce lure size. So you can see how short it is. And there's that blue line. They call this the titanium ice line because it's specially designed for ice fishing, that blue color, but it works so well for finesse fishing. And I'm gonna to try to net this guy before he throws that slimers. Beautiful, look at that. Can I just get him over the side? This net is ideal, look at how nice and calm he's staying. I'll grab it from this side so you can see that strip. Now that strip is four and a half inches long. And you can see just from the fish head shaking that a lot of it has come off. It's still fine to use to catch another fish on it. And he was hooked very nicely just through the maxillary. You know, one thing I find is using small hooks like I am today. This is a one eighth ounce jig. You get such good hook sets because the barb is so tiny. Now that almost fell off, but you can see how tiny that barb is. And by the way, there's part of the grub barb there. This jig is made out of bismuth. It's not lead, so it's a little bit more brittle. So you can see that it actually broke away there. That's part of it, but it still works great. Nice smallmouth. Man, this is such easy fishing. And you can do it all day long, even when the sun comes out. Okay, I'm just gonna get him back into the water. All right, oh, we drifted in close to the shoreline here. Look at, what a gorgeous smallmouth. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Beautiful fish, and look at, he's right there, right under the boat to the deep water. Wow. Beautiful fish. <laughs> Look at it flying all over the surface. You can see the nice man made structure, the steel piles that are here. I've actually fished in the St. Lawrence where one of the patterns was fishing all these big piles that the ferries dock themselves on to pick up the people. Beautiful smallmouth. Trying to go around that thing, but you know what? Even with the slight line, I can steer them out, which is a good thing. They've got so much staying power. Look at this gorgeous smallmouth. Just trying to control the boat away from that. I don't want to leave any of my aluminum on there. I'm going to get him in the neck here. Come on, there. Nice and gentle. You notice that I'm not ripping the net in and lifting the fish real fast. That's because I don't need to, because of this basket net, the live release one, it's ideal. You can see how shallow it is. And it's got a nice square handle, very strong handle. This one is 48 inches long. So it's very easy to net the fish. You don't have to really be too fast about it. Now this is probably the third fish that I've caught on this particular slimer that I'm using. And it's good because I'm gonna be able to show you that material that they use to reinforce it so that it doesn't come off the hook. Not, doesn't come off the hook normally unless the fish really thrashes hard, like smallmouths are known to do. This guy's just hooked around the maxillary. I'm gonna have to use my pliers. You know, it's always good to have all your tools ready. And in the last two boats that I've had, look at that, isn't that a gorgeous smallmouth? Beautiful colors. In the last two boats that I've had, I've uh, had all my tools out so that they're easy to get at. Just gonna extend it out, let him revive for a second. You can see that he's got all his colors. He doesn't have a lot of stress marks. That means that he's ready to go. He's at, trying to figure out which way to go and he's gonna take off pretty quick. There he goes. Now let me show you 
the material that they use for the slimers to reinforce it. I'm going to try to actually peel some of the material back. So I've got some of it off here. I'm going to throw it in the water. See that material? It's almost like gauze that's there. That's what keeps the slimers onto your hook. And you can see my hook here, it's, it's kind of hard. If I tear it, pull it really hard, it comes off. But otherwise, it stays on. You can see how it's almost disintegrating in my hand. Kind of snotty looking, if you will. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you by Rapala Premium Fishing Gear, crafted from experience. Yamaha on the water. This is my Yamaha. What kind of Yamaha are you? Dickies, a legend in work since 1922. Lucky Strike, more fish fight with a Lucky Strike. You know, trying to locate fish is a lot easier if you have the use of a sonar. Now, on this particular boat, the 185 FG3, I have a smaller unit. I've done something a little bit different. Normally I have the biggest unit here, but I've got the smaller unit here. This is a 797C2I. So this unit is the one that I use when I'm actually looking for spots, like in the channels, to see if the fish are there. Then when I start fishing, I deploy the electric because I want to have total boat control. I release the electric down, and then I turn on my larger unit, which is an 1197C. Almost looks like a 42-inch flat screen. You know, it's kind of nice because everything's big. When you get my age, over 50, you want big pictures. You want to be able to read everything. It really helps you to control the boat and see that there are fish down there so you can catch more.